If you guys are looking for more content in between uploads on this channel, make sure to check out my second channel. It's called Michael Sabo Extra. On that channel, there's gonna be shorter and less polished videos, but we do things like build these front shocks for the Z400. So make sure to check it out. It is Michael Sabo Extra. I will have it linked in the comment below. Now let's get back to this video. We've got two things to build right here. In these bags, we've got some brand new pre-owned parts. We've got the front master cylinder. This is the one from the 2003 Z400. And then in here is from the 2005 Z400. We've got brand new OEM parts in here along with freshly vapor blasted parts. These are the original ones. So they look like brand new now. We're gonna open it up in a second. And then over here, this is the thumb throttle from the 03. It's actually in pretty good shape. I put these little stainless steel bolts in there, uh, but it, uh, it's actually pretty nice otherwise. Um, yeah, so this is the one from the 05 Parts Squad. I decided to refinish the nicer ones, especially the controls, you know, they're right in your face. So it's like, you know, for this, thumb throttle. If we blasted this and everything, there might be some imperfections on there even after blasting it. So for that reason, I decided we would refinish the nicer one. So same thing in here. These are all vapor blasted and re-zinc coated by a company called Moto Blast. So we're going to set these aside. Uh, the reason also that I decided like this one I didn't want to use because, well, for one, it didn't have the original top and we're going for an OEM look. So this looks like an old school moose cover. And um, if you look in here, the the plunger is stuck in there. And uh, I don't think that's coming out, man. I think it's seized. Uh, what is a good indicator of that is the rest of the brake components that came off of that 2003. If you look at that pin in this brake, this is the one from the 03, it's totally seized. I mean, it's just covered in rust and stuff. It's probably pitted aluminum and everything. That would have been a nightmare to get out. And then I bet you the aluminum, like I said, was probably pitted and everything. Not even worth saving. The rear master cylinder was the same case. So the brakes on the 2003 were just wasted. So let's start with the master cylinder and pull the parts out here. This tray that I got really is super nice for organization. And then I got this nice mat underneath. It's a bench topper. And between the two, it's working really nicely. I use double-sided tape on the bench topper so it doesn't slide around or anything. And this is actually for like a dog kennel or something. And uh, what's nice is, you know, if you decide that you're not going to be working anymore, you know, with these particular components or whatever it is you're doing, you can just take the tray and, you know, put it on, you know, your accessory bench or whatever and just get it out of the way and then put up something else, you know, that you want to work on at that given time. Whereas, you know, with all these little parts and stuff, if you just had it out here and you wanted to shift gears, you'd have to pack everything up and organize it and stuff. This just is really good for organization. And I really do like working with it. So we've got all of our parts laid out here. I spent a lot of time gathering all the pieces and whatnot, because each one of these things was refinished. So uh, all the aluminum was vapor blasted by Moto Blast. This is the original hardware. It all has brand new zinc coating on it. Same company, Moto Blast. Basically comes out brand new. And uh, this is the original uh, bladder. It's in really good condition. We just clean that up. All the other stuff is original. And then we have brand new OEM parts from Partzilla. So this is the uh, master cylinder rebuild kit right from Suzuki. And then even the little screws for our cover, brand new from Suzuki because those things always get jimmied up. So it's good to replace those. Now, the first thing we'll do is probably, I think the one that I get the most questions on, and that is the inspection window, the sight glass. So these things notoriously fog up and they look like hell. You know, you rebuild your brakes and stuff and it's like, man, like this, look at that crap. That looks like absolute shit. So like you would never, can you imagine restoring this to look like this, which essentially we did because this one was not as nice as it is now. I can tell you that much. Um, imagine bringing this back to life, but still having that ugly, unsightly sight glass. We wouldn't want that. So you can replace those. It's very easy. The old one literally pops right out. What I do is take a socket. Let's see if I can get my, my digits in the drawer here with the camera. All right, so you take a socket, something like this, it fits inside the housing, and what happens is it'll press right up against the sight glass like this, but the sight glass would be in there, of course, and then you just take a flathead screwdriver and pry it against the back, and it'll pop that the old window right out of there. Now, putting the new one in is really easy. We're literally just going to press it in place with a bench vise, and I'll put some painter's tape on here. This is just going to prevent us from marring up the finish. There's already one layer on there. We're going to do two layers. It's just going to add a little bit of 
little bit of cushion. Cushion for the pushing. Now we'll take our sight glass, and I like to line it up like this. I mean, you can do it any way you want. If you want it like that, if you don't care, and you just want to pop it in there, you can do that too. Before we put that in there though, there is an O-ring that we're gonna pop in here. And if you're wondering where to get these sight glasses, you can buy them on Amazon. They're like $2.50 a piece. I'll have them linked in the description below. And if you want, you can put a little bit of brake um, fluid on there and then we'll line this up. And now literally, we're just gonna put this in the vise and press it in place. Nice and gently, just walk it right into place until it bottoms out. You wanna make sure that the O-ring is right up against the new sight glass. and There's not a gap in there. Usually the sight glass is pretty much flush in the front. You can see this one sticks out just slightly, but as long as it's seated in the back, you're good to go. Sight glass is installed pretty easy. And I used to look at these things and I'd be like, man, it still doesn't look that great. But then I discovered there is a film on these. If I can get the damn thing off. Come on, you bastard. It's a stubborn bastard, I'll tell you what. Okay, I guess the film is already removed on this one, but sometimes there is a film on there that you peel off and it makes it crystal clear. So just it's, uh, something to be aware of. All right, now we've got this little bladder that goes tucked in here. Before that goes in, there's a washer that goes inside this bladder. It kind of tucks away in here. And a lot of this stuff, it's good to make sure there's just a little thin film of um, whatever brake fluid it is that you're gonna use. It's just good to lubricate all the parts. This literally just goes in here with the washer side facing up like that. Now we can pop open our brand new Suzuki Genuine parts. All of the OEM parts straight from Partzilla. Look at that, man. Does it get any better than that? And what's even awesome-er is that the little seals are already installed because those things, if you've ever installed those, they're kind of a pain in the ass. So it's nice. A little bit extra that you're getting from the Suzuki kit. Look at that, man. So I've got my brake fluid. I'm using Maxima Racing brake fluid. The stuff works really good. Dot four, and we're gonna use these long ass Q-tips. These things really come in handy, man. I will have these linked in the description below. I bought like a thousand of them for a couple bucks off of Amazon. And I'm telling you what, they really do come in handy. All right, so uh, like for stuff like this, we'll be able to get inside this master cylinder and you know coat the inside with our brake fluid. So we'll just come in here, get a dab of our brake fluid and just get it all over the inside. It's basically gonna act as a lubricant. And then we've got our plunger with our seals on it. If you do have to put the seals on, you can see the way that they're faced. And we're just gonna put a little bit of brake fluid on the seals. Make sure they're clean. Our spring is gonna clip on the top like so. And it's gonna go into the master cylinder spring first. And just make sure you're gentle pushing the seals in and they don't flip. All right, so they're in there. Now we've got our star clip to go inside and getting these things in and out can be a major pain in the ass. That's why I've got these special tusk snap ring pliers. You can see how long the jaws are. They're made just for this job. We'll squeeze this ring like so, and it makes the, the job super easy, man. We're just gonna pop this in place. You can depress our plunger and get that clip down in there. And then you wanna make sure that that ring is seated all the way in the groove. I don't know if you just heard that snap. It usually clips into place if you take a flat head and just make sure it's all the way clipped in there. This one looks good. And last thing we have is this little boot. I'm gonna put a little bit of brake fluid around the seal. And this will just press into place. It can be kind of tight. We'll take a flat head and push the edges down. Be gentle, you don't wanna rip this. Because if you rip it, man, you are screwed. Well, you're not screwed, but you'll have to get another one. And then there's a lip that gets tucked in at the top. 
it can kind of be a pain in the ass. You want to make sure that the seal is not flipped and it's all the way in there. That looks good. And then up top, we've got our bladder and our warning label cover. One of that looking like OEM. The, o the, the original one is black like this. I just felt that it was a cleaner look to be vapor blasted. The vapor blasted aluminum stays nice forever, man. Not literally, obviously, but it really does last for a really long time. And, and I, I can't say that for all vapor blasting services, um, but I know that James at Moto Blast, he does like a polishing finish and it kind of closes the pores of the aluminum. I've noticed uh, even my machines that I let sit outside, ones that I've had all muddy and washed several times, they tend, like the engine cases and stuff that he does, they tend to stay really nice. And I'm not just doing that to talk them up. Uh, that is the truth, dude. They, he does a really good job. Put our brand new factory screws in place. Now, I'm not tightening these down, but I'm still using a JIS screwdriver. And if you are tightening them down, you definitely want to use a JIS, that is a Japanese industrial standard screwdriver, because you know how these things get jimmied up and then you can't get them off. You have to drill them out and stuff. Huge pain in the ass. This thing looks awesome though. We're almost there. We've got our clamp, put it in the up position and our original hardware. We're just getting this threaded in place. Basically the whole idea that I'm doing this here and not on the actual machine when we're building it is because this is what you know, most of you guys already know this that watch me. I call this pre-work. It's basically like, you know, we're getting this all set and then I can put this in a Ziploc bag, set it aside. And when it comes time to actual build, actually build the machine, everything will just fall into place really quickly because these little jobs like this, and this one's easy, but you know, some of the other stuff, like I did the rear caliper, my God, that thing took forever. You know, this way it's just, it makes the final build process a lot more enjoyable really when you get this little stuff done. Stuff like this, you can see I've already got it bagged and tagged, man. Well, it's not tagged, but it is a clear bag, so I can see what's in there. But this is the clutch perch. I already got done building this. This one was actually a bit more interesting and complex to put together uh, because I have the parking brake and stuff on there. Let me get this boot off of here. This is original, dude, from the 2005. The 03 was just really, really whomped out. But look at all the, uh, the little hardware in here. This is the original stuff, man. Even the adjusters. These are re-zinc coated. The, all the hardware is zinc coated, all done by Moto Blast. The little spring and everything, I rebuilt all of this. This is all the original stuff. It looks absolutely beautiful. The only thing different from factory is that it was black. So I think it looks better like this. I really do. I think it's a much cleaner look. And um, there is one thing. We're going to put this lever on in a second. These levers will be replaced. I noticed the, um, the little mounting hole. They're, they're a little wallowed out on these ones, and I didn't notice when I sent them out to get blasted, and that's why it has that play like that. So uh, replacing the levers is pretty inexpensive. It was about uh, 35 bucks, I think, to get them both replaced. So they will be replaced, but otherwise, I mean, I think that came out really, really nice. So we'll set that aside, and just for purposes of the video, we will put this in place. And I do typically put, really? I do typically put just a little bit of grease on the mounting bolt, this is official super grease from X-Star. That's the Suzuki company. Partzilla sent this to me. I mean, dude, that is that is freaking awesome, dude. Everything is OEM Suzuki here, man. Um, but yeah, so I put a little, just a tiny little bit of grease on this because it does see some friction. Put our lever in place, drop our bolt in. As I'm threading this in, I'm making sure not to drag the socket like that up against the housing because it'll drag and it'll leave a little ring around the bolt. It's the little things, guys. We're gonna make this thing superb. It's gonna be awesome. And on the bottom, we've got a jam nut. Not going crazy tight with any of this stuff because it is gonna be coming apart when we replace the lever. Feels good. Looks good. Freaking sweet. Last thing we got is our uh, brake switch for the tail light. How the f does this thing go? Get this bad boy in place. Boom. And the master cylinder is complete. Now we will do our thumb throttle. We're going to do a little bit of special sauce with this one. Going to make it extra special. Uh, so here we have the parts vapor blasted. These literally look like brand spanking new. 
Only difference again is these are silver, OEM would be black. Man, it just, phew. awesome work that they do over at Moto Blast. Really, really awesome. So got the thumb portion right here. And then in this bag, got all of the components. We've even got the rubber piece. Believe it or not, this slid off. I was able to stretch this over. So we should be able to put this back on now that the actuator is actually um, cleaned up. And we do have something in here. If you're familiar with the internals of a Suzuki thumb throttle, there's usually not a needle bearing. So that's gonna be the special sauce in this thing. We're gonna make it extra special. It's gonna be so smooth. You're gonna love it, all right? First order of business, let's get our bearings sorted out. So I will have this linked in the description below. Very, very cheap. It's like, I think it's under 10 bucks for like five of these freaking things. Little needle bearings, pretty basic. Uh, this is what would typically go in there. So you have these two plastic sleeves and they, whoops, they'll go in the housing and then, you know, the shaft rides in there like this. So essentially what our goal is, is we're going to take just enough out of this white bushing to replace the middle section with the needle bearing. Very simple and easy to do. And the way I figured out how to do this was pretty easy. I just took a pair of calipers and measured the inner and outer diameter of the plastic bushings. And then I ordered a bearing with the same dimensions right from Amazon. And we're gonna do this with like the most basic tools so that pretty much anybody, no matter what tools you have, you can take care of this job. It doesn't have to be absolutely precise. We'll just take this, cut it off right about there. And of course, there's gonna be more accurate ways and easier ways of cutting this. But again, I wanna use real simple tools. So, uh, we're gonna put this in the vise so that it doesn't collapse. I found a socket, it's a 730 seconds. It fits in here pretty close. So that when we squeeze this, it will, uh, again, it won't collapse. We're just gonna use a regular old hacksaw and lop this some bitch off. There is our piece. Now you don't have to do this, but since I have a surfacing table here, surfacing stone, I'm just gonna smooth out my surface because it's so easy for me to do. This will just make it nice and flat. But you really, this is super unnecessary. Then I'm gonna take this deburring tool. You could just use a drill bit too. I'm just gonna go in here by hand and make sure that our edge isn't sharp. This is good to go. Now, essentially, we would pack this thing with grease, but it's really hard to get in here, these tiny little bearings. So I'm just gonna take grease and kind of push it in there with a flathead screwdriver. It doesn't have to be packed, really. This bearing isn't gonna get too much strain on it. All right, now check this out. This is where the magic happens. This bearing will literally pop right in place like it was freaking made for it. And then we'll take the bushing that would typically slide in there and push it the rest of the way. Make sure that that's nice and flush. And then on the bottom, we've got the black one that goes into place like that. And now we've got a bearing in there. Instead of just the plastic sleeves, take a little bit of grease, put it on the inside of our bushing. Then we've got our seal. Presses in like so. Get a, put our little bit of grease on the inner lip of our seal, some grease on the bushing up top. And even though we put all that grease in there, I'm putting a thin film on the actual thumb portion also. And this will just pop right in place. And it should be buttery smooth. And we've got this washer, goes in place like so. Then the actuation arm is gonna go in. We are going to put our spring in place like this. And there's a notch, it's like a, it's like a square. All right, goes like that. 
We've got this washer on top. And this has a lock nut that goes on. If it didn't have a lock nut, I would use a little bit of Loctite. Just snug this down by hand. All right. Ha oh, ha ha, super smooth. That is nice. Very metallic. All right, let's put, uh, let's put our rubber on there. Give it a shot of Windex. That should help it slip on. I couldn't believe this thing actually slid off. There we go, man. Original rubber and everything. That's pretty awesome. And there is some zinc coating on the steel portion. Looks great. I've got two brand new um, adjusters. This is for like the limiter. So funny, as a kid, I can remember I had a buddy, he had a Yamaha Blaster, and we couldn't figure out why it would only go like 10 miles an hour. But you know, we were kids, and uh, it was because of this freaking limiter. It goes in the throttle housing up here, and you can limit how far the throttle goes. So if you go real far in with this, you know, you can make it <laughs> so that the throttle barely turns. So if you're ever messing with your buddies, and they're like in the bathroom or something. <laughs> you can do this to their, their quad. I'm sure they'll know, but you know, at first they might be like, what the hell's going on? Put our gasket in place. I'm gonna put a little bit of the lube tube. It's just a, a waterproofing uh, rubber conditioner. And also it makes it so that this, it, when you do take this apart, you know, if it's like years down the road, it won't stick in the housing and this kind of pops into a groove here. How the hell does this bastard go? There we go. Dude, I can't get over how good this Vapor Blasted stuff looks. The fresh gasket in there, it's awesome. I was close to sending this out to have it like laser etched with like the special edition thing on there. I just ended up not doing it though. And I forgot to order brand new screws for this. So we have to use this freaking stock hardware that I had here, these ugly silver screws. I mean, it's, it's ruined. The, the whole project is ruined. That'll be all right, guys. We can, we can deal. We can deal. Just kidding. I don't really care, but, uh, thread these in real quick. This is going to be coming off cause we got to put the cable on there. So I'm just kind of running these in. Oh yeah. Looks super. And we've got our clasp down here and this is the original hardware james at moto blast re-zinc coated them oh yeah is that freaking sweet or what and it is super smooth too now no play oh yeah freaking awesome man we don't even have to do a before and after because we basically have them side by side would you just look at that that just looks freaking awesome. The master cylinder, really, I mean, especially with that crappy window, that dull, dingy, crappy window. And then the new one. It really does look awesome. And then over here, I wanted to show you guys, um, I built this rear caliper. This thing was quite complex. It took a good bit of time uh, figuring everything out on this. The parking brake and everything, I've never done a parking brake before. That's usually like the first thing to go on any one of these machines, but you know, the OEM build, we're gonna leave the parking brake. And then this is the original starter from the O3. Can you believe that? Fresh zinc coating, uh, fresh vapor blasting, both from vapor blast. Uh, and I got a new brush kit from Partzilla and a new O-ring on there. The bolts have brand new zinc on them. So it is literally like a brand new piece. But uh, all this little stuff is what I've been doing, just preparing for this build. Literally everything on this machine is getting restored. Here is that old caliper, like I said, and I'll show you uh, the calipers that I'm replacing it with. Oliphant. You know it's quality if it's Oliphant. That's their motto. Actually, it's not. I just made that up. It just says vehicle brake parts. Very sophisticated. Um, let's move this stuff out of the way. And uh, ooh, let's see. Let's see if there's a difference. Whoa, can you hear the difference, man? 
Yeah, me neither. Honestly, they're probably exactly the same. Now you do, you do feel, um, this one feels a little bit better, but could it just be because it has fresh grease? I don't know. Don't care. All right, so we've got these Oliphant brake calipers. These are aftermarket. Um, I am not afraid to run aftermarket calipers because they, they tend to be pretty good. They, pretty good. Um, aftermarket calipers are a simple item and uh, I've used them on so many builds and I really pretty much never encounter problems with them. So in my books, that's good. I used to work with a guy who used to say, use the in my books phrase all the time, man. Guy was so annoying. <laughs> His name was Jeff. <laughs> He would be like all the time, man. He'd be like, Jeff, you got to move all these, uh, all this, all these boxes and stuff. You've got to go up in the warehouse. And he'd be like, Not in my books, Jeff. You got to work till eight tonight. Not in my books, like tch, ridiculous. <laughs> but anyways, in my books, these uh, these aftermarket calipers are good. There is a little um, differences that I did. These bushings back here, the plug, the ones that they came with a lot of the aftermarket brakes are junk. So I have brand new OEM ones from Partzilla that I put in there, just replace them. Otherwise the brakes are pretty much identical to the OEM ones. And I also put the original um, banjo bolts in that I had vapor blasted and uh, zinc coated. Otherwise, oh, and I put uh, better um, pads in here. These are centered pads because the pads that come with the aftermarket brakes, they suck, dude, the Chinese ones anyways. So the new pads and oh, all, and the, and the um, the brake spring that goes up, tucks up under the pads, the, that's an OEM as well. So if you do that stuff, these are really, really good. Usually don't have any problems with them. So yeah, uh, in my books, these, uh, they check out. This caliper from the O3 is still, you know, worth something too. I would say this is a good caliper. So this will probably go in the eBay store for, I'm thinking like 79, 98 plus shipping. So at this point, I'm just gonna pack this stuff away and keep everything organized. These plastic bags are absolutely fantastic, man. They're like a heavy duty plastic bag. I will link them in the description below. I'll be honest, I, I enjoy using them that much, but they're just great for keeping things organized. Originally, if you saw it in my previous videos or on the main channel, um, I had all of the pieces in these bags and now that the parts are together, I still like to keep them in the bags and we're just basically getting ready for build day and uh, all our stuff will be nice and organized and clean that way you know we're in the garage a lot of times you know like my pop will come out here or something and he'll be like cutting something with a with a saw or some shit like that and you know you're getting dust and grit and grime all over your freshly refinished parts we can't have that so it's a good way to keep them organized and protected just really nice and then we're just gonna come on over here you know, and put our bags in here. And now we are organized and ready for build day. I also managed to get our rear shock done. If you guys remember, I didn't have the bumper. So I got a new bumper in there. Basically, I just had to take the clevis off and get that new one in there. I think just from sitting outside for years and years and years, it deteriorated, but the shock actually feels really good. So uh, that's all good to go. We've got a fresh spring on there. It's, it looks beautiful, man. We're, we're just about ready to start building. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps me out tremendously. And also consider subscribing for more content like this. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.